heavy. Bored. The first time I encountered Charles Simic's poetry was in my last few years of undergraduate study. And yes, it was in a poetry course, listeners. I had an excellent teacher and mentor that I just chanced into getting for several classes as a transfer student from the local community college. Supposedly, those were the only sections left as the transfer students got last pick on the course registration. Their loss, my gain, as it turns out. And that first book, which enamored me to Simic's work in a way, was his prize-winning collection from 1989, The World Doesn't End. A quite brilliant collection of prose poems that solidified Simic as a great poet in the literary canon, in the history books. Ironically, he often said that he never expected the book to be praised so much. He had been publishing collections since the 1960s, and getting his biggest, most celebrated work in 1989, I'm sure, was a shock to him. But as we often discuss on this podcast, listeners, it's always so hard to tell as an artist and creator which projects will resonate with readers on a higher level than ever expected. And that's a good thing, a benefit. A rare instance of celebration for poets, writers, artists. It's probably better not to know. Knowing or anticipating only leads to disappointment, or worse, fatigue. And that's what we have here. But I was soon to find out, after my first introduction with Simic's best book, that the poems in The World Doesn't End, again, his prize-winning collection, were a big step away from his normal style of poetry. And I admit, full-throated, upfront listeners, that the book being discussed today, Scribbled in the Dark from 2017, is not one of his best works. And it comes back to that constant theme we always seem to bump up against on the podcast. Decline. Burning out. And of course... No one is to blame for this sort of thing. It takes so much energy and work to write a book of poems that it absolutely takes something out of you, even a physical toll on the body when reworking a collection to perfection. But I will go into why this book felt so hollow to me as I read through its short 60-odd pages shells of poems. Making my notes and scribbling my ideas and thoughts in my cheap Amazon-branded legal pad. But as I discussed on the final parts of our Emily Dickinson series, this book strikes me as demarcating the decline of Simic's body of work. Living off a very well-earned reputation from decades before and putting out what may be one of his weakest collections of poetry here. Lament. There seems to be a huge emphasis on lament in this collection. And I've come to notice this as a theme in a lot of poets' later works. Tony Hoagland comes to mind, his final book of poems full of lament. But Simic's book seems to focus mainly on the destruction of the world and its art. A common sentiment as we age, and an important one to document, I might add. I'd never argue with that. Older artists must document this in their work. But I don't blame anyone for focusing on this theme of lament. Because it is a ripe theme for a collection of poems. It always has been. Yeats comes to mind. The world we once knew, lived, loved, gone, smashed to pieces of its former self. It's almost a cliche. It is so common. But that's where we expect the poets to come in to give us new ways to express the old cliches, the lament, the decline. And unfortunately, in this collection, Simic doesn't dress it up, make it new or unique in any way. And as the cover art of an old man on a park bench by himself feeding birds implies, most of the poems in this collection consist of just an old man observing things in so neutral a fashion, or at least pretending to be neutral, that it almost becomes a giant cliche in its own right. 
turning back in on itself and folding up what could have been a powerful punch in each line of this book. The images of death are everywhere in this collection, but not in a particularly meaningful way. And what I mean by that is it seems to be so neutral in these sorts of revelations on death, these observations, without any judgment on the part of the speaker or the poet, that it becomes a monotone radio broadcast spilling out across the universe. Little happenings, little laments, some so small as to be just six lines long. And I've stated my feelings about very short poems on this podcast before, but I'll say it again. If it's short, I expect a lot from it, listeners. It better be good. But these poems mostly end up being little sound waves of no particular interest or importance. Just observations. Observations of an aging man as he wanders city streets. The lament for the world that no longer exists. And I was reflecting on this theme in terms of the Gary Snyder book, previously discussed on this podcast. And the way I'd say Snyder lamented for a world he didn't actually know, but imagined. Romanticized into existence. But that's not what Simic is doing here. He actually lived in the world he's lamenting over. And he sees that it's gone. And Simic makes clear that this is in terms of the art of poetry and literature. It's standing, perhaps, in the culture. Or maybe it's importance in the culture and more broadly. Or perhaps the level of which it is taken seriously, which, of course, is not seriously at all, listeners. But there is also a sort of lament for the functioning and processes of the civilized world, for lack of a better term. How there's a sense in a lot of these poems that things don't work as they used to. And of course, as good readers, we should consider the possibility of that extending as far as the speaker of the poems, maybe even Simic himself. Aging. Things not working as they used to. Eyes, ears, etc. Taste buds dying. And also banking forms, phone apps, etc. Massive differences from a previous world. So different it feels like it's gone. And maybe it is. But as I always say, listeners, you should always strive the best you can, at the very least, to engage as fairly as possible. And I tried to here, even with my bias in favor of Simic and his earlier work. As I said, I want to be clear, his reputation is clearly earned over the course of his lifetime. And I'm not taking anything away from that by criticizing his later collection of poems. How could I? I'm just talking about this collection of poems, scribbled in the dark. But this collection is, and I hate to say it, feels a little phoned in. So much so that, as I said, it ends up being observation any aging man could make in any city in the world not the observations of a great poet. And it's disappointing. There is no specific city mentioned, even. And while that isn't a deal-breaker for these poems in Simic's Scribbled in the Dark, or any poems for that matter, it is surprising that someone of Simic's caliber got so bland and lackadaisical with it. Almost all the poems in this collection appear to be so minimalist that they end up saying very little, if anything. Nothing noticed that's unique or clever, making them almost banal. And that makes the observations fall a little limp instead of propelling us into a wonder of poetic realm, exploring thoughts, meanings of life, love, happiness, death. But no, it's just a couple going to dinner and the speaker noticing something about other tables. And, as I said, not even interesting things, listeners. I will get to what I would call filler poems in more detail later in the podcast, listeners. But I'll just point to a few things that got on my nerves as I was reading through. From the very first poem on page three, I was already agitated. 
The poem, Dark Night's Flycatcher, left me bewildered with how little was on the page, how brief and unimaginative. The sign of a literary giant who has burned out, at the very least, declined from their enormous peak. Observation taking the place of meaning making. The lament is supposed to be the meaning in some of these poems, and admittedly, it does fill in the gaps in places. But I really was shocked at how uneventful this entire collection was. Again, mostly seeing people at restaurants while the speaker is also at a restaurant. The image is loosely connected. Of course, I take it as a sure sign that Instagram and TikTok poetry has fully taken over the literary world. And even the greats, like Charles Simic, are not out of its grasp on the art form. And Simic does seem to lament that too, as he rightfully should, and so should you, listeners. What passes as a good poem in almost all of the major magazines right now is disgraceful. And Simic clearly knows it. He knew it back in 2017. We can all see it. But he also seems to, in a weird sort of way... A sort of hands up in the air, giving up pose is something I can't get out of my mind as I was reading through this collection. A sort of succumbing to the trend of everything is good, so therefore nothing is good. Almost exasperated at trying to resist. And that comes across in this collection. But one of the positive aspects of this book is the author being so close to death. It really seems to play out in each poem. Poems like Signs of the Time, about a closed-up library, and Missed Chance, a poem that really shows the dismal image of the life of a poet, a melancholy of regret, despair at the state of literature, the world, a loneliness almost. And that is perhaps the most moving part of the entire collection. As I said already, listeners, Simic is a master There's no doubt about it, just not with this particular book. And what I want to talk about in more detail in today's episode is this interesting phenomenon of artists declining as they reach old age. I will not speculate as to why any given artist has this happen to them, but it is just an interesting fact about living. The energy it takes to create something, especially something great, In line with the giants who came before us all, poems like All Things in Precipitous Decline becomes a major theme in this book. The literary decay, the societal decay, the decay of the speaker, the poet, and of course, the Yeats line comes to mind when reading this, that is no country for old men, outgrowing the world that grew us. And this is very much in Simic's Scribbled in the Dark. But it is also so bland, so observational in places, in the literary tradition of Frank O'Hara, maybe, but less funny and entertaining, that I couldn't help but be bored by the almost cliche things Simic seems to find worthy of putting into a poem in his old age. There is a poem in this collection literally called On Cloud Nine, a cliche so glaring the title made me pause and really think about what an older artist would be thinking in terms of not editing that one out, not giving us a little more flourish or color to it, spinning it in a unique way. But no, it's a title in this collection. Maybe you're starting to see what I'm talking about, listeners. A decline in the final product, an aging out of the discipline that made him so great in his lifetime, And as I read along with Simic in this collection, I found myself getting saddened by the state of the art too, receiving the message that Simic was going for. So, perhaps this book did accomplish what it wanted to. But by being so subtle about it, I think the general idea is lost, buried in too deep. The plain, banal observations of an old man sitting in a restaurant. The good old days behind him, just doesn't do enough to carry the collection home. It sputters out almost from page one. And just one little line, that's it, one little line, 
in this entire book references his childhood in Nazi-occupied Europe. Just one. And that one line does so little where he chose to place it that I have to wonder what he was thinking, if he was thinking at all. Decline, that ugly part of life no one wants to talk about. And this is true for everyone, not just artists. We are all only human. We decay. And the world we knew, grew up in, usually decays long before we reach that point ourselves, especially as things change faster than ever now with the internet, etc. And Simic is capturing that in this collection. He is. I just wish it wasn't so uneventful and small. The clear aftermath of a towering figure's career. Such a lack Heavy. of gratitude for life. Forward. I, I aspire to boredom, Heavy. I should say. Forward. Heavy. I am heavy, heavy, heavy. Forward. Has you night sweats and the day sweats, pal? Pal, I do.